Today, we're gonna to be looking at another smart ring, the Rincon Generation 2. Is it any good? Let's take a look. Full disclosures out of the way, Rincon very kindly sent me the Rincon Generation 2 to review and test. The views and opinions that you're gonna to hear today are gonna to be mine and mine alone. So let's get to the review. Rincon Generation 2 will be part of the Amazon deal day from the 8th of July to the 11th of July. If you're interested in the Rincon 2, you will need to pre-order your ring sizing kit. I will of course put links in the video description so you can check out the Rincon 2 and place your orders. Now let's take a look at some of the features of the Rincon Generation 2. So the battery life is from 10 to 12 days and up to 150 plus when placed inside the charging case. The Rincon Generation 2 is the world's thinnest and lightest smart ring with a minimum thickness of 2mm and a width of 6.8. The Rincon Generation 2 weighs 2 to 3 grams, is IP68 for water and dust up to 100 meters. It is a titanium cast with a no subscription fee app. What's really important to me and what I will always do for an honest review of any wearable tech is put it through its paces and look at the data points. So what I've done is over the last few weeks taken the Rincon out on various tests and now I wanted to show you some of the data points of the Rincon Generation 2. So I'm now going to be looking at the data points between the Rincon Generation 2 and the Garmin Fenix 7. Now on the right hand side what you will see is my VO2 max and my heart rate zones. So why this is important when I look at this, this gives you an indication level of my level of fitness. So for those of you who don't know, your VO2 max is basically your body's ability to use oxygen during a run. So typically the higher the number, the more fit you are. So mine's currently around 63, which would indicate a high level of VO2 max and a high level of fitness. Just below that is my heart rate zone, just to kind of give you another indication of roughly where I am in terms of fitness. And at present, my level of fitness is really good. So the points of data, that I think are useful for me to look at and key indicators for me are my sleep score and various points of sleep, my activities, and underneath is a, another level of activities when I'm just at rest or when I have a normal day. So to start off with looking at the sleep score, so just to give you an overhead view of my basic sleep, so it's going to give you a score, the duration of sleep, your REM, your deep sleep. Now, I think these are subjective points, but I think these are worth looking at. Your resting heart rate, your BPM or your beats per minute, your SpO2, your oxygen in your blood when you sleep, and the ability for your body to carry oxygen in your blood, and your HRV, your heart variable rate. The way your HRV is important, it is a level of indication of your overall heart health. Now, HRV measures the beats in between the beats of your heart. Now, broadly, and I will caveat this, whereby I will say I would seek medical advice, always go and speak to your healthcare professional. I am not medically trained, so I would always advise you to go and speak to your healthcare professional. So with your HRV, Broadly speaking, the higher the number, the healthier roughly your heart is, and the lower the number, this could indicate a problem. Now, just because it is low a couple of times or maybe over a short period of time, this does not indicate that you have an unhealthy heart. This could just be because lots of stress or other key impacts. So it's always really important that you do speak to your healthcare professional if you are concerned. Then underneath, what I like to do is compare 
for example, the duration of any activities that I do, the distance to see when you record between a, a ring and how good that is compared to a Garmin, your average heart rate and, for example, your calories burnt during an exercise, for example. So we're now going to start off with the sleep. So in terms of my sleep, we're going to look at an overall score of 92 to 88, which is roughly there or thereabouts. So these next four indicators I'm going to talk about are a really subjective. So sleep, the actual time of sleep, 724 to 734 hours of sleep, which is there or thereabouts. So it really does depend on the detection between the ring and the watch, and they are roughly equal or there or thereabouts. Same with your REM sleep. So this really, again, does depend on the detection of the watch and the ring, and it's there or thereabouts. And that's the same with the deep sleep. So it just doesn't initial indicator between a less expensive smaller wearable fitness ring that's a really small and really lot compared to a more expensive uh, bigger censored sport centric health health watch i'm really impressed with um, the comparables between the data now this is where i really look at the data and these are key points for me as we've already said so we have our heart rate at rest which is 39 to 40, which I think is phenomenal. Some other rings I've tested, this has been vastly out, but I'm really pleased to say that the Rincon Gen 2 really does uh, match up to the Garmin. The oxygen in the blood, 98% to 97%. Again, this is roughly thereabouts, um, what I'd expect to see, and I'm really glad that this is comparable. Now, the heart rate HRV, this is where it can get subjective. So I would expect, and this goes for both the Garmin and the Rincon, for my heart rate, roughly, I am a good level of fitness, I would expect it to be around 60 to 65. Now, the good thing I will already say here is that this is on the upper level of that. So as you can see here, it, it, this is very subjective and without real, real tests, you know, you're, you're, you're never going to get it accurate as you possibly can. So the fact that this is 90 is, is a little bit high and 75 again is verging on a little bit high. But the fact that these are higher above that 60 and not on the low side, knowing where I am in my fitness, I, I'm quite happy um, with that there. And as I say, it's a very subjective, but it's nice to see again that a small fitness device like a ring can match up there or thereabouts with a more expensive Garmin Fenix 7 watch. We're now going to be looking on a day where I didn't really do a lot as as, as such. Um, I did walk a, uh, a lot in this day as you can just see here with the steps. And when we are looking at the steps again very comparable. One of the things I have tested with other rings is that again because of how it captures the data, these can be really, really off. But I'm really pleased that these steps, again, are quite comparable. Looking at the average heart rate, this is, I think this is fantastic. Again, looking at some of the other devices that I've worn or seen, this is where the rings start to fall down, really, is this everyday um, heart rate. So, the ability to be able to measure your heart rate, average heart rate on any given day, I think is quite a subjective and difficult thing to get right. I roughly know my Garmin information. I've been wearing this now for over two years. So I, I'm, I'm kind of um, quite pleased with the information that comes out of that. And the Rincon definitely keeps up with that and I'm really pleased with that. So the calories burnt, these are the kind of um, calories kind of burnt um, activity wise and looking at the uh, the data here I, I during a point in the day so i've just picked a a point halfway through the day just here and i'm pleased to say that the calories that were burnt roughly halfway through the day are there or thereabouts and then looking at the full day um including active and inactive on both these days and the total calories for the day come out to roughly about the same so this is on the 25th of june now on this day 
I did quite a long run about 19 19k so let's take a look at an active day so on the 25th of june this randomly taking a day now i know on this day i did about a 19 nearly 20k run again if we look at sleep scores the duration of the sleep on the 25th so you can see the sleep there is slightly slightly out by roughly about an hour but again, this could be any number of factors. Again, looking at the data that I think is important to me, the resting BPM, the SpO2, the blood oxygen level and HRV are all there or thereabouts and really accurate. Now, for me, this is fantastic. I really am pleased about how accurate this Rincon Gen 2 for the data that I need that I think are the most important data points to me of an indication of health are roughly there or thereabouts looking at the activity itself which was a run of 19.8k so if we look at the distance at the bottom there now there is a disparity because the ring didn't link up with the google app and did not record uh, the distance so as you can see there is a disparity there to counteract that and to caveat that, if we look at the actual data recorded during the run, so the actual length of the run between what's recorded on the ring on here, 125, and the Garmin of 124 is highly accurate indeed. So the heart rate on average, I cannot understate how fantastic this is. So lots of other wearables I've worn, including watches and rings, cannot get anywhere near the Garmin. Now, Garmin for me, again, you can have this as a subjective point, but I roughly know after wearing the watch for two years where I am and I trust the Garmin. The fact that this Rincon can record and actually for a whole run come really close to the Garmin, I think is fantastic. And it's not a typical thing that a smart ring or smart watch can do. Again, we have the calories burnt. So I always look roughly about halfway through the day to see where I am on the calories the calories burnt which are pretty close and then we look at the total calories burnt for the rum. Rincon is slightly higher than the Garmin and I can tell you for why that is and the amount of steps. Now on this particular day um, I noted this down because I knew I was going to talk about this is I had to come home and charge the watch. So the disparity there between the calories and the steps is simply because I had to take off the watch and give it a charge. But I'm really pleased to say that that would have, I estimate that would have roughly been about the, the steps and the amount of calories burnt. So let's look at the Ring Con app. Now before we start, I need to say that I'm not medically trained and I advise you to please seek out your medical professional or your doctor for advice before you start looking at the data within Rincon. One of the major features of the Rincon Generation 2 is the ability to monitor sleep apnea. Sleep apnea or obstructive sleep apnea syndrome is a breathing disorder that is associated with other illnesses and like I've said I would always consult your medical professional. On the Rincon app, there is a comprehensive assessment for sleep apnea, a monitoring mode, a risk score, and a history. Now, I do not suffer from sleep apnea, but it's really interesting as it does record potential sleep apnea events, and it's been a really interesting feature for me to review and look at the data points. As we just saw there with the data, I've been very, very impressed with the ability on such a small form factor to be able to keep up with something like the Garmin. Now, referring back to the app, it does record the data for the sleep. So on the app, it does record data of things like efficiency of sleep, the duration of sleep, your REM, whether your sleep was light, your HRV, which as we've already spoken about is really important to me, your heart rate as well at sleep, and all the data that you could ever need to analyze your sleep. It's all in there and all in depth, and I'm very impressed by the data and the information that you get regarding your sleep from the Rincon app. Activity now in the Rincon app. I've been really impressed 
by the level of data and information that the Rincon not only records on the hardware, but also within the software of the app. The data, as we've seen, is intuitive, it's accurate, and it really keeps up with the Garmin Fenix 7, which I think is absolutely fantastic in something of such a small form factor. The data information recorded for the activities with the Rincon 2, I think is phenomenal. And again, it's very comparable to a comprehensive app like the Garmin app. It records your steps, the calories that are burnt, and these are split into your active ones where you do an exercise and your basal, which basically means that's the calories that you use to basically stay alive. I'm really impressed with not only the hardware of the Rincon Generation 2, but I'm really impressed by the no subscription Rincon app. What really impresses me in a no subscription free app, the level of data and information that you can get from the app. Not only does it cover the activities and it can record things like running, walking, indoor running, climbing, and lots and lots of other sports, but it's the level of information all for free that you can get from this app. When you combine the other features of the Ring Con app, such as the sleep apnea and the ability to be able to monitor that, I think is such an invaluable feature and will really improve and help with people's lives. So what are my final thoughts on the Ring Con Generation 2? It's first to say that in such a small form factor, the functionality that you get out of the ring is absolutely superb. And I'm particularly impressed with the battery life when you pair it with the case. So the standard life of the battery is 10 to 12 days, which does really put it up there high in its class. And then an extra 150 days when you pair it with the case is simply phenomenal. The ring is lightweight, weighs two to three grams, and it really is a very small and light smart ring, one of the smallest and lightest I've tested. The no subscription fee app model, I think is absolutely fantastic to have that software for free to go with that hardware. The Rincon app is intuitive and really easy to use, and you can actually really get lost in the amount of data and information that you can get out of the app. I would like to thank Rincon for letting me test the Rincon Generation 2. Don't forget the Rincon Generation 2 is part of the Amazon Deal Day, which is from the 8th of July to the 11th. Again, I will put the links in the video description for the Rincon and for the deals there as well. So on that note, please don't forget to like, favorite and subscribe. It really does help out the channel. And of course, see you on the next one. Take care.